October 20, uh, 2020. Oh, protest in Nigeria. Oh, yeah. yeah. So the country let me down. Yeah. Because he, he asked some people, I was not good. Where am I going to? I was, was I can say, I was doing fine. I was an animator in Nigeria. There was work. It's not as if there, there was work. They, everything was soft. And then, of course, Nigeria got me down. And I was like, yeah, whatever. I, that, there's no point fighting for this country. My name is Kansu Hikvom in Nederland. I am a freelancer uh, working for myself uh, as an animation animation director. You know, being a freelancer in the Netherlands, does that work in terms of your finances and helping you like plan for the year? And do you manage things yourself? Do you outsource it? For the accounting and admin, in terms of tax payments and all of that, uh, I have a book holder. Okay. Uh, so an accountant, basically. And that um, they help me just when it comes to the financing part. You know, it's my job, of course, to track my expenses, uh, find out what I'm spending, how much income I'm making per month. You have an average, obviously, but let's be realistic as a freelancer, not every month, unless you're, yeah. it's something that, yeah, it's not every month that is going to come in. Some months might be bigger than others. So every quarter, you're supposed to pay your taxes. So what did you spend on investments? What did you spend on office equipment? What did you do? Like, you put up, upload it, but you, you, your revenue and all of that. Yeah. Of course, you know how much fat you're going to pay. It's good for structure. Um, it helps. It really, really helps. Um, so for me, for instance, what I did was, because uh, I was earning a certain amount of money before I left a, a corporate job, decided that I'm not per month. That is going to be my uh, threshold. Yeah, I'm not going to go be below that. If I make way more oh, oh, in Christmas, <laughs> but it will not be less. Obviously, realistically, the goal will then be to get, because you are not on a steady pay, mm. the goal will be to get a job at every quarter you will if, even if they pay you just one month yeah you spread it out on average yeah. it would feel like you've earned yeah exactly mm. yeah i mean I, I said i've been lucky but again you have to plan for when you're unlucky so i have uh savings that i can always fall back to yeah uh for six months to eight months if nothing happens yeah and I, nobody's paying you state this other sure it's an, pay, you would pay rent this country that collects every month, which is another culture shock, by the way. In Nigeria, you pay rent at the end of the year. So all year, you can up on a tree, you can't, you fly. If you like, don't go to work for eight months. This is nobody's business. Come in one year cycle, it's time for rent. You pay. And, uh, I didn't come all the way here to be homeless, man. Nah. How do you think the working culture in Nigeria differs so much from the Netherlands? Back home. Advertising agency I worked in, we kind of grew into a family, you know, we grew out for stuff. There are some of them that I was, we were so close to, we formed a group of like, what, 10 or even 12? We, oh, wow. we, we traveled to Dubai. Oh, wow. Okay. We went to um, a resort back yeah. home in Nigeria. Yeah, we are, we are, we are cool. I mean, I mean, in several of these groups, you know, I mean, that one. I mean, another one, yeah. same colleagues, uh, well, a different set of colleagues, where we just share memes and, and, and crap. It feels like with co colleagues here, you might not have that family. It's, yeah, you're coming to work. Come to work, do your thing, have a nice little chit chat, you know, over coffee, and then get the hell out, you know, yeah. just do your thing and go. The best I can say, the best bonding I can say is they have borals on Friday. Yeah. So boral culture is is uh, Luke. Um in Nigeria we don't have borals. On Friday everybody goes to a bar or everybody goes on or goes to cinema. Boral culture is a thing where you come have wine and all that and everybody goes and that's the end. We have, come on Monday, they ask you about your weekend and What can someone who is planning to come here do you think they can start doing to put them in the party or currently it's gonna sound cliche but you have to you have to work hard you have to put yourself out there you have to get good even me that everybody's like oh you're working so good i'm like yeah it was i'm not i'm trying to evolve every single day because the world is moving faster and i'm trying to catch up so yeah it, it's just get good yeah i'm not that good because not necessarily because you want someone to notice you that would be nice you obviously want that, but also for yourself. Because if you do it and you're developing yourself, someone will notice. And someone will ask you to, hey, why don't you 
come on, get good in my, uh, my, my company or in my production or something. If you can't get that, then maybe people will be like, oh, you're good enough to, to teach. Would you say the filmmaking or the creative industry, how does it differ from being like back home versus here? I'm sorry to say, but this is, I mean, you guys know, it's a lack of collaboration. It's just, there's just a lack of collaboration. And I think a lack of support for the creative scene. Um, over here, I have seen overwhelming support for, I mean, I'm in a trajectory that supports creatives. It doesn't matter what you're doing. I mean, they, you can be doing, you can be painting trees. Maybe that's what you, they will support you. They will find funding for some inexplicable reason. But uh, you could be doing something in the AR, VR space. Somebody's gonna, there's funding some way. There's funding for film. There's support for animation, illustrators. There's, so, there's just, oh my God, photography. I, man, there's just support for just this, like, come and collect this money so that you can do this thing that you want to do. You want to make a game. Okay, the other day I found out that there was a starter's support. They just give you shaking money. You have an idea, but maybe you don't have the technical know-how. Well, you have the technical know-how, but maybe you don't have the coding skills. They will give you a starter support to just get your proof of concept. Just, just bring it from your head to the Just that's it. Fosters even more creativity. It encourages you to sit down and be like, yeah. hey, I have this idea. Yeah. I can't, I'm not going to spend my money to it because I need to pay rent. That's right. But the government or some stitching or yeah. someone is going to give me some money to take this thing out and buy that. And that's the difference. The lack of collaboration in Nigeria, I don't know, because we have the population. There's no reason why we can't be uh, doing our own style of animation the way the Japanese are doing. But this person is working on their own. This person is all siloed. I can't blame them because everyone is costly. You think you were all beautiful, not uh, uh, collaborate? Well, collaborate if everyone was chilling and yeah. yeah. It's because they have stuff going on here for them pretty yeah. well that they can afford. Well, okay, yeah, yes, yes, here we go. Yeah. And it helps. <laughs> for, uh, you know, things like uh, Lagos Comic Con, I think it's, what, it's about 11 years now. Amazing, you know, stuff like that. But we need more because if those things have competitions, those things will also ginger to even make themselves better. Yeah. We had like 10 Comic Cons, rather, one in Oyo, one in Lagos, uh, one in Abuja. I missed the one in Lagos. Let me go to the one in uh, uh, Potakot. You know, yeah. it's just, it, it's, it, it, it's nice. Are there any tools or resources you want to share with people for them to learn and be better? Uh, YouTube. People underestimate YouTube. All the stuff I've learned, it's YouTube and Google. I don't go, I don't pay for courses like that. I think I only pay for one course, Motion Design School, which is another good resource by the way. When I was trying to learn uh, uh, character animation after effects, well, really, I use Blender as a 3D software and it's YouTube. So I have an idea and then I find a way on YouTube to execute that idea. Um, most people just want to learn, as, as they say, I want to learn 3D. Oh, okay, and then, you know, well, are you just going to be making, well, what's it for? Is it for games? Is it for VFX? Is this for, for what's the purpose? Are you making a short film? If you're making a short film, okay. Do you have your script and storyboard ready? Okay, fine. If you have all those things, what does your character look like? You've drawn it out. Okay, then go to YouTube. How, if your character is a bird, how to make a bird? On YouTube, somebody has done to do the tree that your bread is going to be on. Somebody has made a tree before and you do it. So by the time you start putting all those things, you're also training yourself and stuff. But people have come to me, oh, I want to learn 3D. I want to, oh, what are you, what, what is it that you want? This is architecture. Yeah. Then go on YouTube and find a channel that is dedicated to architecture um, visualizations. What's next for Kansu? What's What are you looking forward to seeing in 2024 or in the next coming years? You see, I want to be realistic. Um, that's my main goal, being realistic. And in that realism, I want to create my, uh, my second short film post, uh, or rather my first short film post graduation short film. Um, and I want to attempt no, to start creating a video game because I've always wanted to create a mobile game. So I want to at least start it. Finally, I want to create an AR children's book. 